Hello everyone, my name is Daniel Antonio, the CCI Finance Honors member. Today we'll be talking about the daily variation of stock prices, the four-state asset pricing model with an emphasis on ESG. I will be talking about the environmental, social, and governance factors in investing. As an economics major and finance minor, I have always been interested in the different theories and strategies towards investing. More specifically, I was intrigued by the idea of ESG investing. Have you ever heard about ESG investing? Hi, my name is Isabel Clark, and today I will be speaking on the daily variation of stock prices and acreing with our four state asset pricing model. My areas of study are in finance and psychology, so understanding how investors base their decisions has always been of interest. Have you ever wondered if daily fluctuations in the stock price generally matter? Now we will start off a quote from President Obama on March 3rd, 2009. He states, the stock market is sort of like a tracking pole in politics. President Obama said and elaborated, it bobs up and down day to day. If you spend all your time worrying about that, then you're probably not going to get the long-term strategy wrong. Mr. Obama was trying to convince the public that he wasn't overly fixated on the day-to-day -day gyrations of the stock market. Interestingly enough, our research found the direct office opposite um, from over 65 countries. What is this for? Well, investing in the stock market, there are many things an investor might consider on a given day. Behavioral psychology shows that the behavior of an investor like any one of us, bases their decisions on pre-existing tastes and preferences. Investors will look at current conditions in the stock market to decide which strategy one will take. The prospect theory from Kahneman and Traversky shows that the decision-making context of one of them is one of the most critical factors in their decision. So once again, this shows the idea, the implications, and the relevant theory proposed. And a quote on the future of ESG investing. Well, before we talk about what ESG investing is, here's a quote from Mr. Larry Fink, the CEO of the world's largest asset management company, BlackRock. He proclaimed in his annual letter in January of 2018 that to prosper over time, every company must not only deliver financial performance, but also show how it makes a positive contribution to society. In Mr. Fink's annual letter, he further emphasizes that he isn't trying to be in vogue, but realizes that investors are no longer just looking for thriving businesses to invest in, but are also considering their contributions to society based on the ESG factors. If the leader of the world's largest asset management company advocates for ESG investing, it must really be important to a lot of investors. As investors, we are continually finding new ways to optimize returns and achieve our personal goals. So indeed, the idea of investing in line with one's values is an attractive concept, especially to the investing population. Recently, the concept of investing responsibly by incorporating the ESG factors as a screener became mainstream in corporate finance industry. However, the big question still lies, is it better to invest with ESG constraints or not? We decided to find out for ourselves if this approach works better or worse than the market. In reviewing the literature for ESG investing, I found it interesting to note that investors have always sought to invest socially responsibly since the 1800s. So the idea that this is a recent wave is false. However, this approach to its investing has gained increased momentum with the amount of assets and responsible investment strategies growing globally. It stood at $22.9 trillion at the beginning of 2016 up to 25 percent from 2014 this was stated by the united nations principles for responsible investment in addition to do that in addition to that the world economic forum has to estimate that a trillion dollars of its assets will be committed to impact investing in 2020 which means the sector is forecasted to grow by 250 billion dollars annually so esg is kind of a big deal so if you're still wondering, ESG investing is when investors like you and I decide to implement our awareness of social societal issues and making investment decisions. There are three factors socially conscious investors and institutions consider. 
environmental, social, and governance factors. The environmental factor covers the company's contribution to the sustainability of the ecosystem. This is really important. The social factor which examines how companies serve customers, employees, contractors, and their communities. The governance criteria evaluates the company's leadership, shareholder rights, audits, and accountability methods, methods etc. These three criteria are the basis for ESG investing. Investors have always wanted to invest in line with their values, and this approach provides a clear path to doing so. There is a critique of ESG investing. We all would love our investments to have a positive impact on the environmental, social, and governance issues that surround us. However, we cannot ignore the statistical and mathematical significance of such an undertaking. According to Robert Hugh Bestra in his academic journal, The Disappointing Reality About ESG Fund Performance, he states that ESG investors choose from a subset of available securities. This is true, and this is reality. Investors suggest that ESG fund funds adds on an additional constraint, which simply reduces the amount of options available to maximize returns. The models that we use to optimize or to test this our hypothesis was the capital asset pricing model. This model describes the relationship between the systematic risk and expected return of a security. As we can see in this slide, it kind of explains in depth what this equation does. With a slope on beta and an intercept on alpha, the classic capital asset price model, both the asset and market returns are adjusted by the risk-free rates of return. Recently, the market model, which omits the risk-free rate adjustment, is more accepted because its assumptions are less restrictive. Also, the optimization model we also considered was the, was formulated by Harry Markowitz in 1952. His model seemed to assist in the selection of the most efficient portfolios by analyzing various portfolios of the given assets. Although there are several criticisms and flaws to the model, the pioneering work of Harry Markowitz means various portfolio selection model has been widely used in both theoretical and empirical studies. We use this model to regress the returns of the market index against the four ESG indexes. What was our approach? In testing our hypothesis, we formulated a strategy to reach our objective. Our approach was to acquire holistic and accurate data on ESG indexes in the U.S. After countless searches, we opted for the Bloomberg database that provided us with credible and accurate data sets on U.S. ESG indices. We pulled monthly financial data dating from 2017 through 2019 from their database and chose four prominent ESG indexes that implement the Markowitz model. Utilizing R, a programming language, we were able to examine larger data points and modify our graphical illustrations with mathematical and statistical analysis. Please see our codebook for reproducible results. Out of all, over 100 ESG indices on the Bloomberg database, we selected these prominent four ESG indexes, namely the S&P 500 ESG index, the Bloomberg ESG index, and the World ESG Leaders Index, as well as the IPOX US ESG index. These ESG indexes are all weighted against the sustainability criteria, which screens out companies that actually maintain proper sustainability and meet the sustainability criteria. This graph shows an, a complete illustration of all EC indexes regressed against the S&P 500 benchmark. In doing so, we noticed that all four EC indexes follow the market really closely. We also observed that the S&P 500 EC index ended the year 2019 above the benchmark. What does that mean? The ESG can do better and does do better in some instances than the market. However, we also noticed that some ESG indexes fell below and were below the S&P 500 market, which was second in this graph, as you can see. So what are our findings? Although some may assume that ESG indexes underperform in comparison to the market, and others the opposite, our research findings do not show any evidence to support either claim. 
but we can prove that EFC indexes track very closely to the market. With regression of coefficients at 88 to 101.4%, from our research, we have found that EFC indexes provide similar returns and risk levels as the market. I must add that this is really good news to those keen on investing with ESG constraints because they can still benefit from the returns of the regular market and make positive contributions to help resolve the environmental, social, and governance issues in our society. According to the received theory of investor behavior, asset valuation is based on the mathematical explication of returns. This is embodied in the efficient market hypothesis, which states that asset prices reflect all available information in any given moment. We use this concept to analyze investor behavior and how one is always trying to stay ahead of the market. We have shown and stripped down the classical prospect theory to address investor behavior from Tversky and Conaham. These tenets include reference frame dependence, loss aversion, and DMS to gains and losses. As stated above, there are many other ideas in literature with prospect theory, such as isolation, censoring, etc. We choose to focus mainly on these three tenets. Our foresee model hypothesizes that A and B vary with current directions of movement of the asset return and the market return. The model extensively shows evidence that people pay significant attention to these daily move moves in the stock prices. We have data from 65 countries across the, across the globe to show how this correlates. The table below shows how observations are partitioned according to the signs of assets and market returns. Each state also indicates different signs of asset returns and signs of market returns that correlate to current market conditions. The 4 model is very dependent on the parameters and the partitioning of the model, which adds a dynamic or adaptive dimension in, the current, in that current market movements in the assets and market returns change with each day, while also allowing for loss adversion. Here are data, our daily data that we have collected, strenuous and from 40,000 publicly traded countries across, across the world from 1998 to 2000. We have gathered this data using the programming language MATLAB to account for each piece. Not only does our hypothesis test basic components such as non-proportional margin sensitivity to gains and losses, but we also address stability through time versus market model stability and explanatory power for small, medium, and large cap companies to give a full picture understanding. <laughs> to conclude, there are many current and future researches that needs to be done. The research that is taking place right now is to explore portfolio implications. As time goes on, we will see a significant amount of progress done. The 4C model clearly shows that daily changes in stock prices do indeed matter and change investor behavior. Both Daniel and I would like to acknowledge, acknowledge Professor, Professor Justin Shea, graduate assistant, Jose Valde Espinoza, and Professor Rita Gorner for their support throughout this process. Thank you, and this concludes our topic of discussion.